Pyramid of Giza, but we've Stonehenge in England, we've Machu Picchu in, in Peru, we have uh, the Nazca Lions down in Peru, we've got huge pyramids, three incredible pyramids in um, Mexico, there's pyramids in China, you know, there's pyramids Gu- Guatemala, there's Angkor Wat in Cambodia, there's these incredible anomalies all over the world from ancient times that there's just no accounting for. So being a biblical scholar, I knew a little bit about a secret race uh, in the Old Testament, which are called the Nephilim. And these first pop up in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, where it says there were giants in the earth in those days. Now, the word for giants there is Nephilim, N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M. It's a Hebrew word. So it should read there were Nephilim in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and it says, These became the mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Okay? Mm. So I knew a little bit about these guys. So I started doing some study on them. I started studying a little bit more on the ancient monuments, uh, with particularly in the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I put two and two together, and I got four. And so I believe that my book, uh, The Nephilim and the Pyramid of the Apocalypse, by the way, it's, it's sold extremely well. It was number one in the prophecy section of Amazon Books for two years in America. Uh, a production company in America called Grizzly Adams Productions, they made two uh, TV documentaries and DVDs based on this book. So it's, it's, it's sold very, very well in the United States of America. And I still get emails from people who've read it and, you know, tell me three people wrote and told me it's the best book I ever read. You know, it's, it's been very, very well acclaimed. And so I believe this is the first book ever, not only proving who built the pyramids, but also why they built them. So that is a sort of background to, to how I got in. It all started in Turkey, looking at the uh, Temple of Apollo in Didyma. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned some of these megalithic sites around the world, but uh, I guess from your point of view, then you don't even have to go that far because you have quite a few interesting ones in Ireland already. Giant's Ring, Newgrange, of course, and there's tons of other ones. Uh, ha- have you been... Uh, interested in those sites previously as well, or or did it, this first dawn on you then when you actually went abroad and saw some of this stuff? Uh, well, I mean, I, I was I've, I've been at Newgrange. Newgrange is only literally thirty minutes from where I live. I've read a couple of books by Oscar Wilde's father. You, I don't know if you guys have heard of Oscar Wilde. He's a playwright. Yes, a uh, famous Irish playwright. His father was a a polymath, which means he was an expert in many different sciences. He was a an a optical surgeon. In fact, he, he um, pioneered some optical surgery, uh, which they still use today. But he also wrote a couple of books on ancient Irish uh, folklore and legend and history. And he, he um, showed many, many, many of the ancient monuments, megalithic and neolithic tombs in Ireland, which date back to around the same time as the pyram- pyramids of Giza. And Newgrange is one of those. In fact, the interesting thing about Newgrange, just to describe it briefly for your listeners, it's about three acres in in size. I don't know what that is. It's about, say, 100 meters one way and the other. And it's round and it's a bunch of stones and there's grass on top of it. And there's one little opening, one little aperture or opening into it, which leads a tunnel into the inner sanctum, the inner chamber. And you've got to bend down and crawl in there. And on one day in the year, when the sun rises, it illuminates the in, inner chamber. And that one day just happens to be the winter solstice, the 21st of December every year. Mm. And that ties in, in my opinion, Newgrange with the Mayan calendar, which there's a lot of interest these days because according to the experts, they tell us that the Mayan calendar says that the, the world is going to finish or cease on the 21st of December 2012. Now, I don't know whether that's right or wrong. But the interesting thing is, is that the 21st of December it connects these two buildings. And of course, many, many of the megalithic sites and uh, like Newgrange, Stonehenge, uh, Giza, and Angkor Wat, and lots and lots of other ones, they all have astronomical connections and uh, mathematical connections. Uh, so in, as far as I'm concerned, these were all built by the same group of people. This uh, mysterious cabal that very, very few people know anything about called the Nephilim. Yes. And uh, so if we talk a little bit about their background, so to speak, you come from a biblical perspective, obviously a background in that. Uh, but do you take into <clears throat> account here, um, I mean, 
I do know that you're going to a little bit on the ufology aspect to this as well, of course, and tie, maybe you can tie this together for us. Do you primarily think that this has to do with uh, another race coming from a, an, another planet outside of, of our solar system even potentially, or, or are you more looking at this that this is a, a, a demonic force, so to speak, that has been uh, and primarily are interested uh, in, in Earth and Earth activity. So tell us about this. Well, okay. Um, just before I get into that and answer that question, let me give you just a few facts and figures about the Great Pyramid of Giza, because that's central to our discussion here today uh, and to uh, finding the answer to this whole conundrum or enigma. Mm. Okay, so... Then we'll talk about the Nephilim. Okay, first of all, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Uh, Your listeners will have to picture this in their mind's eye. It was originally finished in a polished white limestone. So it would have been white, smooth, iridescent, and many legends say that its capstone at the top of it was finished in gold. So this would be an an amazing, awesome, awe-inspiring sight as it stood in the middle of the desert, and it could be seen as, from as far away as the curvature of the earth permitted. Gleaming, reflecting the sun, shining, as I say, made of polished white limestone. It would have been impossible to climb up it because you just slide down. Now, each side of the Great Pyramid of Giza is an equilateral triangle, which faces exactly to the true north, south, east, and west. In fact, on the north side and on the south face of the Great Pyramid, are four distinct shafts. Uh, They call them star shafts because they pointed four distinct stars, Sirius, Draconis, Beta Orsa Minor, and Orion. And I've identified three out of these four stars with uh, gods, which appear either in Greek or Roman or Egyptian mythology and also in in, uh, biblical, in the scriptures. Uh, Each side of the base... The length of the base of each side of the Great Pyramid in cubits is 365.2422 cubits, which just happens to be the exact length of a solar year, including the extra fraction for the leap year. The angle of the slope of the Great Pyramid rises at, t- at 10 to 9. That is, for every 10 meters you go up the side of the uh, Great Pyramid, you rise in altitude by 9 meters. And if you take the height of the Great Pyramid and multiply it by 10 to the power of 9, you get 91,840,000, which just happens to be the exact distance from the Earth to the Sun in miles. The Great Pyramid is in almost the exact dead center of the world. It's halfway between the northern tip of Norway, the southern Cape of South Africa, the west coast of Mexico, and the east coast of China. And it intersects the 30th parallel, both latitude and longitude. So it's almost in the exact dead center of the world. There's enough stone in the Great Pyramid to build a six-foot wall or a two-meter wall from Los Angeles to New York. Hmm. If it were a skyscraper, it would be 42 stories high, which meant it was the tallest building in the world for thousands and thousands of years until the Americans started building skyscrapers. And finally, listen to this. The solution to the mathematical problem of how to square the circle is incorporated within the geometry of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Hmm. Now, as I say... What we've been asked to believe is that primitive man or Egyptians wandering around in animal skins were able to build this incredible pyramid, yet we couldn't build it today. And, some, and somehow these guys did it, yet they hadn't figured out how to invent the wheel. And that's why when you see documentaries about the Great Pyramid, you'll always see these slaves dragging these huge blocks along the ground, you know, which is a total rubbish, Heinrich. Yeah. You know, the, the thing is in the center of the world. It's pointing at stars, you know, how to square the circle is in it, pie is in there, everything's in there, and the fellas, these guys didn't have a wheel. I mean, come on, give me a break. If if you believe that, I'll sell you some land in Florida, you know? (laughs) (laughs) It's a good one. So, obviously, there's a huge mystery here in regards to something is off. That much we know at this point. Either we are being um, not told the whole story about how advanced human beings have been in the past, or we have the other possibility that someone else has been down here and uh, building it, and I'd reckon then that you go for the uh, latter one, correct? Well, there's absolutely, this is absolutely the way it is. Now, there's, as I say, there's a lot of information buried in the Old Testament scriptures about this secret kapal of people called the Nephilim. And as I say, in Genesis 6, 4, it says the Nephilim were on the earth in those days when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men and they bare children to them. And it says these these became the mighty men which were of old men of renown. So what this is talking about is 
It's talking about the Nephilim. The Nephilim in Hebrew means the fallen ones. Okay. Now, these are what I would call fallen angels.